Not that it makes much difference. <laughs> 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 it's for the
but um, highlights here are, this is a wonderful place and I strongly recommend that we become members because it's, a, it's important to be at the table, it's important to be with other jurisdictions around the country to learn best practices, how we should be spending our money, what really innovative um, uh, programs and projects that they are undergoing using these funds. So um, the mayor of Augusta uh, was there. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, he was there. And it was an excellent opportunity to be there and also be with the HUD folks. The senior members of the HUD administration were there. Um, I'm sure they know us by name. <laughs> we're not the only ones. And that was the other thing, too, I want to highlight is whatever challenges we have, we're not the only ones. People like Tulsa, Oklahoma are having to pay $6 million back to HUD using general money. So when you pay back money, you, don't, you, you use your general funds to pay back money. So Tulsa is essentially paying off $6 million back to HUD. Austin is getting ready to have to pay back a million dollars from the 2012 project. So you're in that room and you hear other stories, and so we're not the only ones, but what we've done is we've been very uh, fortunate that we're not at that place where we're having to return monies, because we've been working very hard to ensure we're in compliance. And you know, it was interesting, we had an opportunity to visit HUD uh, in D.C. back in 2016, and, and you know, they affirmed the same thing, that there were a lot of communities having those challenges, and that was a big part of the discussion, especially around Section 8. There's been a conversation um, here uh, among some leaders asking that Section 8 be returned to Mount Vernon. The challenge with that is they do not necessarily provide the administrative monies that we need to stay up on inspections, to stay up on ensuring that people are financially eligible each year. Uh, and that's where we got into problems years ago when we lost it, and um, and we don't have a municipal housing authority here in Mount Vernon either, and oftentimes that's run through the municipal housing authority. So uh, I think with the very small team that we've had, the limited resources, uh, and, and continual unfunded mandates by HUD that we've been able to maintain a high level of compliance. So thank you, because HUD was probably one of the loosely most loosely regulated organizations many years ago. And they recognized that and they began pouring more levels of compliance on, but they never expanded the administrative support to support um, those requirements. And, and so it makes, makes it very difficult for smaller communities um, like Mount Vernon to maintain that level of, of service. So thank you for finding ways to be um, creative yet thorough. Well, we're getting there. We need about another year and a half, in my estimate. If we are able, if we don't have any additional roadblocks, you should be in a really good place a year and a half from now. But it's, a, it's a addressing those roadblock, roadblocks. So um, I gave out a copy of the legislative highlights. Um, it was um, an interesting meeting because it became fairly contentious because we had representatives of the current uh, administration in the room. Um, and there were differences and viewpoints on, on some of the programmatic pieces like um, fair housing and the Fair Housing Act. And whether or not as we submit our five-year plan, do we need to con continue submitting a fair housing plan as well? Um, and so that gave a lot of heart for communities around the country because um, the laws to protect um, uh, the most vulnerable in the, in the country are being stripped away uh, under high goals. So we will continue, as I said to them, in the city of Mount Vernon, we, will, we have started putting together a fair housing plan covering the topics that were required under the Obama administration, because at the end of the day, we still have to adhere to federal rules and laws around, um, around uh, how housing for the disabled and housing for protected classes, so we are still going to be held accountable, maybe not by HUD, but by other branches of the federal government. So what you have is the raw data. I still have to put together the recommendations for our consultant of how we're going to address barriers for affordable housing. And the data is um, uh, it's very interesting, so I encourage you all to review it because as we put together those recommendations,
recommendations on the coming to the city council and to the elected leaders of the city to see if this is a direction we want to go. But right now, you'll see in that report um, that uh, low-income residents of the city spend more than 50% of their income on rent, whether it's whether they rent or they own. 50% goes towards um, towards rent housing. I would challenge that for some people. It's about 70, 75 percent. Mm -hmm. So, yep. and for the, those people who precariously perch on the brink of homelessness, and we have a lot of people living at that level. And you know, years ago, that's why we started the shallow rent program. Mm -hmm. And when we went to the housing meeting for the county executive, um, we also proposed that that's something that they look into. They are expanding money for affordable housing options. And so it would be great for us as the community that created shallow rent 25 years ago that we put something together. The county is aware of it because they adopted it for the HOPPA program and for the COC. But if we can kind of look at that and, and see how that could be beneficial. Um, and when we spoke about shallow rent this time, we did not speak about it just for people with disabilities, but people who um, or the working class poor, those who were paying more than 50%, looking at higher income levels and saying that this um, rent subsidy of two to $500 a month or something in that line would uh, only last for 12 to 18 months and then would also be paired with some type of capacity <coughs> building around education and employment training. Because the one thing that we know is we do not have the ability to sustain <coughs> and build the number of units that we need for very low income people. And so that the greater responsibility is to ensure that we're providing, um, that we're upskilling people through workforce development and through educational opportunities to help them have the capacity to fiscally support the greater demand um, and cost of housing. And I think this is one of the pieces where This was a meeting with, this was a meeting with other mayors and city um, <coughs> leadership throughout the county looking at those opportunities. And it was for a higher income group because oftentimes we're not looking at, you know, people who make forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, but they cannot sustain the rent levels and something like this really might be a bridge to, to a system and, and stabilize. I know there have been conversations as a result of the housing needs assessment report that came out and what are some of those next steps so that this was part of that discussion. Of this was part of that discussion. Okay. All right. So, so more money for emergency financial assistance will be provided, more money and more support for working with you know legal assistance and legal aid, but they are also going to put more money in the budget for housing subsidies. But you know, my, my contention is that the deep subsidies are only going to go but so far. And that's why if we adopted uh, a higher economic threshold for showering, um, that we can help more families throughout the region. Okay. And then something else that White Plain does is they provide tax abatement for seniors 62 years and over uh, based on their annual income. So that's maybe something to consider if that makes sense for the city. Um, but that's a, that's a bigger discussion. Um, so anyway, I, I'd like for you all to look at the raw data and as we put together recommendations, I think it's important for all of the electeds to review those recommendations and provide input on how, how we want to approach this very serious issue we're facing here in the city around housing. Um, I'm gonna recommend that we um, we look at paying the dues and becoming members of NCDA because it's important for the staff to attend. Now, I attended this year. I think these legislative conferences are the ones to attend. They, they do two a year. One, the next one will be in June in St. Paul. It's not a legislative conference, but it's a conference um, in general around best practices. St. Paul, Minnesota? Yes. <laughs> what month did you say? June. Oh, okay. I just stole it out by the. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cold place. Yeah. It's a. Yeah. Um, and so the dues are about 
uh, from now through the end of June. Um, and I'm not sure if that's something we need to vote on or uh, what the protocols are for something like that for membership dues. I mean, we can. If you have a, if you have a budget, don't you, do you have to vote? Uh, um, if we vote on the budget. If we vote on the budget for the year? Uh, previously we did. Okay. For the 2020? The one we just did was not 20, it was 21. 20. So we probably already called. So it's a two year budget. Mm -hmm. okay. so we already submitted the package in Paris. So do you have it? Do you have a line for the Yeah, it's in the package. I'm sure. Well, the planning, uh, if you're looking at the planning department, but we have a line for conferences and trainings. Well, you might not. You, do you want to get caught up in that whole? Right. So I'm going <laughs> so to move that we uh, pay dues for the uh, 2020 for NCP. Okay. <coughs> Separate. Right. 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 All right. So roll call. Uh, but she says roll call, not you. Oh, really? Yeah, she's a chief. She's oh. a roll call, then you call the roll. Right, so roll call. Uh, do you want to call your chairman or chairman? She's the one person. Chair. 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 Vice Chair? Aye. Treasurer? Aye. Member? Yeah, aye. Thank you, Madam Can I just make a recommendation for record keeping purposes? So you might want to go back and memorialize this to what we just did on the record as 2020 resolution, memorialize it in terms of your resolution, and make it all O3 because we already have a all O2 that's coming. Okay. And then on the 2020 consolidated plan, um, I gave out the draft of consolidated plan last month. Um, if you all have any input, let me know. We will be, it'll be <coughs> items at our public hearing. Um, we have been actually reaching out to stakeholders, asking for their input. A lot of what that looks like is based on stakeholder input, residents of the city. What, what is the, you scheduled the public hearing around? February 27th will be the public hearing, um, and I will send you the invite as well. Um, you are a board member, so I think it's important for you all to be there. The, what, one of the things I'm requiring now is applicants who submit proposals are required to speak for three minutes regarding their proposal. Okay. What, what time is it? Five o'clock. This is the public hearing. Right? This is the public hearing. Is that the time? The people who work there, right? No. Is that the time? I, I don't. You never I, had trouble with the people coming? Okay. Well, so many of these people are coming from nonprofits. Yeah. Oh, so right. this is this is not intended for the public to attend. I've had people come at five o'clock. Public <coughs> nonprofits, none of us that are complaining. Um, so if, if you look, we're gonna probably have another one um, because I want the consultants to come out and we put together the recommendation. Right. We can always make it later, but uh, this one will be all of the applicants will come and present. And then I will give updates on what's in the consolidated plan and the findings of the raw data on the AI. In March, um, we will probably have the consultants come and we can make it at 6 o'clock, um, if that makes sense to folks. But um, you are a board. I, it would be important for you all to be there if you can. Well, well I mean, so, if, so if we could, when you schedule it, if we can make sure that we're scheduling it with the board members because the 27th wasn't on my calendar. Oh, but I, it on, I guess okay. so, okay. You know, so because we all have oh. varying schedules so if you let us know the schedule in advance then it's easier for us to be there as opposed to trying to adjust it. We okay. can find a date that works. Yeah and I think and I have 
raised it last month, but I think that I need to. The time is now 9.43. We have been waiting, um, but we have a very busy day to day, and so we need to move forward with the business of the city. Deputy Clerk uh, Holmes, can you? For the roll call. For the roll call. Uh, Controller Reynolds, Council President Copeland. Here. And Mayor Patterson Howard. Here. Present. 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 We're not present anymore. We're here. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And so we will show, we go to item number one, resolutions approval, and amending ordinance number six, adoption. January 22nd, 2020, entitled an ordinance granting permission to the City Council President Copeland to attend City and State Diversity Summit. So moved. Second. On the question. Okay. On the question. No, you're not on the this is now she's in charge. Oh, hearing, the question. Question. hearing none. Okay. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Uh, aye. Okay. And Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Item number two, authorizing the city to join the NCPA Cooperative Purchasing Agreement. Purchasing what? Purchasing. Uh, purchasing program. Thank you, County Correction. Purchasing program. So moved. Seconded. On the question. Hearing, Council. Hearing none. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. And Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Item number three, authorizing the city to join the Source Well Cooperative Purchasing Program. So moved. Seconded. On the question. Hearing none. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. Uh, Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Item number four. Granting permission to the Department of Recreation to sponsor the fifth annual Mount Vernon Day, formerly known as Mount Vernon Club, event hanger, banners, and sponsors the Diabetes Awareness Walk. So moved. Second. On the question. Hearing none. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. The Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Number five, granting permission to the Department of Recreation to sponsor Summer Breeze concerts and events, accept donations and hang banners. So moved. Second. On the question. Hearing none, roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. And Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Item number six. Authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Westchester County for the fun-filled summer program. So moved. Second. On the question. Carry on. On the question. I appreciate that they get their stuff in early, but I can never remember when the stuff is because they put it in so early. Oh. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. <coughs> Council, Council President. Aye. <coughs> And Mayor Patterson now. Aye. Uh, efficiency in government. Yeah, but you still got to remember, if you have both, if the thing is in June and we approve it in February. Yeah. And we'll get it old. You're older still. <laughs> old is older. I don't know who's seven. Authorizing Mayor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Westchester County Youth Bureau. So moved. Second. On the question, hearing them. Council, Council President Copa. Aye. And Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Right. Item number eight, authorizing <coughs> the mayor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement or an IMA with Westchester County Youth Bureau. So moved. Second. On the question, hearing them. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. And Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Item number nine, authorizing the mayor to enter into an interdiscipline, 
intermunicipal agreement <coughs> with the Westchester County Youth Bureau? So, second. One question. Hearing none. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Hi. And Mayor Pemson Collins. Yes. Item number 10, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Westchester County to participate in the STOP DWI patrol program. So moved. Second. Any questions? Do we get a lot of stops off of this, Deputy Chief? Yeah. Is that good or bad? A lot of stops. Or On this stop uh, DWI patrol program. It depends. It depends. Um, how we work out because it's with state, county, and you know, depending on our I, so, I just wonder how we do compared to the rest of the county since we're so close to New York City. Actually, a lot of it, um, a lot of it's on the highway. Oh, okay. A lot of the stops and the rest. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. And Mayor Benson Howard. Yes. Item number 11 is granting permission for two members of the police department to attend the conference for motor roll assistance. So moved. Second. Any questions? Uh, hearing none, roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. And Mayor Pansom. Yes. Item number 12 is granting permission for four members of the police department to attend community policing education training seminar. So moved. Second. On a question. On a question. I look forward to those reports, not yes, just the agendas, the reports. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. Mayor Patterson. <coughs> yes. Item number thirteen: Grant permission for five members of the police department to attend the community policing education training center. So moved. <coughs> Second. One question. Hearing none. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. Mayor Passing Howard. Yes. Item number 14. Granting permission for four members of the police department to attend the standardized field sobriety testing training course. So moved. Second. One question. Hearing none. Roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. Mayor Patterson. Yes. Item number 15, granting permission for two members of the police department to attend the news media relations training. So moved. Second. Can I send somebody from the council? Uh, I could I could see if there's any LOCs. Please let me know about that. Me and the commissioner. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call. Council President Copeland. Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. Item number 16, authorizing the mayor to execute an application for correction to the year 2019 city and county tax bills and directing the controller to issue a refund. So moved. Second. One question. Hearing that, roll call. Council President Copeland. Aye. Mayor Patterson Howard. Yes. So, just wanted to say, um, you know, today it's a very simple agenda, but we did receive in this agenda over $115,000 of funding from Westchester County for different youth and recreation and um, public safety programs. So, that's, that's a good thing. And there's lots of opportunities for training. Which is almost low cost or no cost. So, National League is the Can we talk about that? We can't talk about that. Yeah. Not yet. Oh, okay. So, we had good, I thought we made some good connects in Albany yes. um, this weekend. Well, over the past. I don't leave the hotel, but fortunately, I was in the host hotel. Yes. So, over the past two this weeks, um, so through I the Board of Estimate and some of our meetings, we <laughs> going to the New York State Conference of Mayors. Um, had really, really great meetings and, and conversations <coughs> up there with uh, the state controller and his staff and um, different officials from several of our state departments around the partnerships here in Mount Vernon. And then we had opportunity to attend the um, New York Black and Hispanic 
um, conference caucus weekend this weekend. And again, more conversations around public safety, financial management, um, inter-municipal agreements, and uh, economic development, returning citizens, a lot of really, really great conversations. And so when we are allowed to go to these um, events and represent the city, it opens up opportunities for expanded relationships and expanded resources to come into Mount Vernon. So, and even though we paid for this weekend, yes, last weekend, this came out of our own pockets. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I want to say that uh, Councilwoman Duarte and I had the opportunity to, to meet with Lobby uh, Selwyn Fredlow and our Senators Biagi and um, Bailey. And I said to uh, Senator Bailey, be like Senator Biagi, bring your million dollars to one of our schools. <laughs> this is one place where uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Uh, so we had good conversations with them about, especially uh, someone with Fretlow who's been up there. You know, he's like the leader of the Westchester delegation now. I think he's been there. But him and Sandy Gale at the time. And uh, he certainly knows all the pockets of money and our needs. So. So I'm excited about what will come forth in the state budget, despite it's not the well, what will come forth in the state budget, let me leave it at that. I did have a, a fruitful conversation with uh, Senator uh, Stuart Cousins as well. So um, I don't call her often or the speaker, so when I call, they know I need something most likely. <laughs> so I look forward to, to, to their response. But I think what's encouraging most about attending <laughs> conferences and these meetings is the level of excitement and willingness to um, support, partner with, and uh, provide resources to Mount Vernon. But not just Mount Vernon receiving resources, I think the state also recognizes that we have our own um, talent, skill, and we, that we do have best practices here and people are often uh, also looking to learn from some of the things that we're doing uh, and that we will be doing. So this is good. Did, did you get to speak to Level? Yes, I did. Uh, okay. I did. I got an opportunity to sit down with um, Mayor uh, Lovely Warren, the Mayor of Rochester. They're doing, you know, Rochester has a lot of similar oh, issues. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're urban communities and so the issues that we have and that we're experiencing from infrastructure to public safety to youth services, to education, to community revitalization versus gentrification. You know, those are, are really important issues that we've been able to talk about and we look forward to continuing to discuss. So I'm at DC this weekend, lobbying on the hill. Um, so I won't be around for the stamp ceremony, unfortunately, because I knew uh, when I, uh, I was a fan. Um, I'm excited that they did this for her. Because sometimes some of these stamps, I look at them, I'm like, who is that? But anyway, but I know, I know Gwen Eiffel. I knew Gwen Eiffel. I knew Gwen Eiffel. So uh, oddly enough, back in, let me see if I can remember the year. I'll get old now. Uh, maybe it was 2001 or two. I was on a panel in D.C. with the National Council of Negro Women. I think it was the National Council of Dorothy Hagerstall Lobby, the National Council of Negro Women. Don't ask me how I got on this national panel. To this day, I don't know how I got on this panel. But I was on the panel, and Gwen Eiffel was the moderator. Um, so I had a chance to talk to her at length. And uh, Dorothy Height was pushing, um, oddly enough, uh, this young woman, uh, Tanya, so I can't remember her last name, was senator of, uh, of Illinois. Now, as we all know, she didn't win because Barack Obama won. <laughs> but um, she was pushing pushing this young lady. She wasn't even a Delta, so I was surprised. I was like, she had sore one. She's like, no, but she's my godchild. But, like, but anyway, I was on this national panel I met with, and we have kept contact. And when she became, um, you know, a uh, member of our sorority back in 2003, at, uh, 2013 at Centennial Convention, you know, I had a chance to talk to her again. So I'm sorry I won't be here, so save me a stamp. Absolutely. All right. I move that we adjourn this meeting. Second. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Council President Copeland. Aye. Mayor Patterson. Aye. He is here. He said he is here. Not you. You don't never I'm say it. Know. You never say it. Maybe time to say it. All right. Let me tell you. And you don't say roll call either. She says roll call. It's not me. Upstairs is my meeting. You never have to meet. You just read the stuff. That's it. All right.
So go over that way and let them beat you in the submission. Yeah. Come, come to my club. Go help them. And slide all those things so we can get those processed and get reimbursed maybe by a from the controller. All right. Mm -hmm. That is a joke. That's But July is really what we expect. I, I sent down Melvin, Texas. Is okay. Is one here today or no? I, I think you can wait somewhere. I think what we expect to do is do a better job of working with your staff and a mayor to make sure it's on your calendar. So my apologies for that. Um, but we will have another one in March, and I think having the consultants then really dig in in terms of the data will be really important. And then the goal will be to submit this in March um, and to HUD, because then they review it and then they'll have 60 days to provide feedback whether or not we need to make modifications to what we submit at the end of the day. Um, we also um, we were also informed that for the 2020 allocation is 1.7 million dollars, so we've seen an increase of a couple hundred dollars um, for a CWG, CWG allocation. And so um, I will, um, based on what's in the consolidated plan, where we said 30 percent will go towards public infrastructure, 26 percent for public facilities. Uh, 26 percent for public services. I'll I'll put together the draft uh, budget with the actual now amounts now that we know what it is, and I'll and I'll send that to all of you. Um, and again, um, any input um, would be welcomed. The uh, 2020 CDG application review. We have received the applications, the proposals, and so um, if we are to have a citizen review. May review these uh, and score them. I need a list of, of, of citizens who you'd like to see review these applications, so I defer to the URA board to see who should be on that panel. And how many people do you need all together? And that's three to five. Three to five. And I defer to you. I don't think more than five, but right. my recommendation. Now, who are these people from where? Mount Vernon residents, um, you know, people who may have experience with grants, someone like Adania, um, anyone else who, a business person. Um, like a Patrice, a lot of small, you know, someone, so that they can look at the applications and score them. Well, we need somebody from the business community because this is business. They, they get the grant, they're supposed to use it. Right? Well, I mean, uh, so it's a combination. You have your economic development, uh, no, I'm not with the category. I'm just trying to look at different people who would serve, who should serve. People who run something. Patrice is good because she runs her own agency. And she's not applying, I assume, for anything here. Yeah, we would always look to make sure there's not conflict based on the application. How would you get um, name just escape somebody like Atkins? Because she, she would be good. Diane Atkins. Oh, we um, also, um, we could look to some of the people that have done it. Um, yeah, I think Patrice would be good. Let's look at a gentleman. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of somebody. What on the piece of Pedro? Yeah. Pedro Coel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of They go through them they as through. a group. How does it work? So we would give them. We would give them a binder. We would give them a scoring sheet. They would score them individually. Individually. And then come together. And then come together. Okay. And then, um, and then we can then afterwards, Commissioner Morton, myself, or however we can talk about whether it's the URA board and reviews all the recommendations afterwards, or how you'd like to approach that. What that process should look like. Um, they should attend the public hearing to hear the applicants. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Somebody asked me about it. I gotta ask the commissioner about it. Uh, I gotta ask you about something else too. Like those boards. Do we have the terms for all? This is I'm off the topic. Do you we have the expiration dates for these yes. boards. Yeah. Me and you. Yes. We can talk about that after. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't say about it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. And then <laughs> <laughs> 
and that second of all, that she should not, that we should not be paying them out of URA when they're when they're receiving the salary out of the city. The That's reality, always been done. right? It's, it's always been done that way, and, <coughs> and the reality is, is that um, whether she was the um, commissioner or not, she was the executive director of the URA, and there was an approved salary affordable housing stock. So, so these are critical issues that we have to address. Um, these, this cannot be about politics. This behavior on the controller's um, behalf has existed since 2018. So whether it was the Thomas administration, the Wallace administration, or this administration, she's continued to reject monies, uh, and, and we have to deal with this and address it. All right. So, so I guess two points. One, so the record is really at this point devoid of her being a member and making a me uh, uh, objection. Her objections in a public meeting on the record, right? You got she has the ability. But she letter. never attended. And she never came when we were entertaining the resolution to state her objections on the record, right? And so you became aware as the chair of a, a letter that she had written to Vincent Hong. Uh, I think my request to the secretary is to make sure that we get a copy of the record for the for the record of of uh, her position because that's important as people are you know change and are sitting here to understand the position of the comptroller at that time. So you got to make sure you have a copy of that in the record. Copy of the letter. Yeah, the copy of the letter. Yeah, record. I think that it also should be noted that the administratively. <laughs> possibly can do to one um, work with HUD um, to ensure that we are in compliance with um, our processes around um, drawdowns and acquisition of funds right in addition to that we've done everything that we possibly can to work with the comptroller um, several um, years ago or maybe about a year and a half two years ago close to two years ago worked um, with the Comptroller's Office to establish a very clearly delineated process for um, the voucher submission, um, voucher review, and also um, a, a distribution of, your, of um, HUD funding. In fact, it was, I think, it might have been a seven or eight step process in which the Comptroller um, which I, as a treasurer, worked with the comptroller to um, outline and to and the comptroller approved it. Um, um, that these are the steps that we clearly are to follow. In addition to that, most recently, um, as um, the commissioner and the treasurer, I have also sent communication to the comptroller's office um, outlining the um, importance. The, the, the impurities of having to ensure that we get these funds um, that right now are sitting um, in the coffers of the city's um, bank account um, because they directly affect our most vulnerable. I outlined for her that one of the programs that um, is affected by this is the reentry program that is run by um, upon this Rocks Ministry. Um, and the fact that we have now two vouchers that are outstanding in which they have not received it, and so they are having struggles. Um, the um, organizers of that program are calling almost every day. And they have called um, me since we've been sitting in this meeting. Um, are calling every day because of that. Their lights um, have been turned off um, because they're not able to meet their bills. Um, in addition to that, I also outlined that there are um, individuals who, residents who are receiving housing subsidies um, in which the landlords have not received um, their housing voucher uh, money in order to pay their, the subsidy of their rent um, as well. And the landlords are talking about proceeding with eviction um, for them. In addition to that, also that there's money that is still there for our subrecipients um, such as um, MHA and um, the Guidance Center, who are providing um, also housing um, subsidy um, assistance in addition to also construction trades 
program and which is, you know helps those who have returned back into the community to be trained in a particular um, field. So, and the response of the comptroller was that she was equally concerned about it, um, but that um, she um, needed to uh, have that the mayor and the city council president remove the temporary line out of her budget, and that needed to be returned back to her budget in order for her. Um, and that's the first step in order for us to be able to get these. Funds. You can return it, it's going to say zero. We put the budget in, it'll so, say zero. But essentially, and, and I'm just going to say this on the record, essentially yeah. that, is, that is nothing short, almost, of extortion. Um, bottom line is the individual who was funded through the temporary line is not someone that deals with uh, vouchering or any administrative function. It is, it is someone who sweeps her office and serves as security. Um, and it is not someone that has any administrative capacity. And so she is now, has rejected $30,793.37 in COC voucher program funds. And she has, is holding on to right now monies that have been drawn down for COC vouchers in the amount of $94,676.82. And that is just under continuum of care. These are funds that um, pay subsidies, housing subsidies, for individuals who are living with HIV, <coughs> mental health issues, substance abuse issues, veterans, or another physical disability. So these are our most vulnerably housed individuals. Uh, and she has already down she, these funds are sitting in the coffers of the city right now waiting to be transferred over to the Urban Renewal Agency. I am concerned um, that there is an inappropriate commingling of funds. These are federal funds. These are federal funds which have very clear guidelines attached to them as to how they can be used and, and the speed in which they must be turned over to the Urban Renewal Agency. And so there are monies that are going back to October 11th, up through and including February 7th, that have been drawn down and are either sitting in the coffers of the city and not meeting the 48 to 72 hour transfer over to the Urban Renewal and another 30, almost $31,000 that has been rejected. Well, actually, just so real fresh, there's only a fallback at 619. No, this was just for continual oh, okay. care. Oh, okay. So, I was saying, so okay. this is just for okay. continual care. Oh, okay. And I will go through and I will um, I will calculate the, the numbers under the CDBG. So the, the information that I did receive from Vincent Hong and that he sent to his staff is that programmatically Mount Vernon has been doing a very good job. But unfortunately, um, because of the lack of timeliness, not around drawdowns, but around transfers of monies from the city controller's office who receives these monies directly and electronically from HUD, and that these funds are not being transferred over to the Urban Renewal Agency, that there can be a reduction in our grants. And this, this reduction in our grants um, would directly impact the city's ability through formula funds, funds that we don't have to do much to apply for. We just have to comply when we receive them. And, and so this is automatic money from Mount Vernon, which helps us, which allows the Urban Renewal Agency to provide services to the residents of Mount Vernon that are not levied against the taxpayers. This is free money. This is free money, and so this is this is egregious, um, at least, and, and very concerning um, to this body. And we will be following up and addressing this not only with HUD, but with uh, other officials that might be able to help us move this along. We, we understand that there are municipal financial laws, and we need to make sure that they're being followed, and if they're not being followed, then we need to address them. This is, this is not politics. This is about service, and uh, we want to do the work of the city and only do the work of the city. This information was shared with the state controller at NICOP. So, so basically, you said that she indicated that she shared the concerns.
concerned with and she's not paying it. Did she propose how any of this could be dealt with if she doesn't do it? Did she tell you? No. No, there wasn't there wasn't a resolution other than what I have what I offered you as it pertains to the need for that position or that line to be reinstated. But there's no direct right. connection between that and none, providing these none, services. None that I know of. And I just want to be clear for the record. <coughs> and these that, still I'm sorry, for the record, that position was removed in February, for the record. Um, and for the record, these drawdowns and these vouchers and these issues that we're talking about right now go back to June. So how do we make a temporary line of a cleaner and a security guard in the controller's office goes back over, over a year, almost a year, well, seven months, eight months, to impact um, monies being paid to urban rural agency that support our most vulnerable residents? Is there's there's a disconnect. There's a clear disconnect. And I think also for the record, it just should be should be noted that what I have reported to this board, what I have reported to this board, I have is through my written communication with the comptroller, so that there is no misunderstanding about what was asked and what was responded. One, one is standing out. Is I, is I'm not fading, fading. No, okay, okay. I just one, 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 one that stands out to me the most is it was on Jan January 17th. Food distribution in the amount of $48,735.48. Was there any kind of rationale <laughs> as to why that was rejected? No. So, and for the record, um, we had in our HUD audit, they spent nine days with us, and when they spent three days just on CFC, there were no findings. No program findings. No program findings, um, and no financial management findings, because we have been, we have been, we created a chart of accounts and a general ledger, and we've done all the reconciliation on the URA side. And so we spent a lot of time making sure that we were in compliance. Um, and so, at this point, I cannot transfer the funds to the URA until fiscal year 2019, is what they're saying. So I've got until August, September uh, of fiscal year 18, when the grants end for fiscal year 18, that we have to deal with this. After that, fiscal year 2019, starting August, September, is when the URA can directly administer the funds. So I've got another six to eight months of this. <coughs> Thank you for everyone's patience in allowing us to put this information on the record um, today. Okay. Here we are. Madam yeah. Mayor, the other piece I want to make sure you're aware of for our CDBG is <coughs> we're going to have a timeliness test on November 2nd. I need to make sure that we uh, spend down um, about $2 million, 1.3 of CDBG funds and $650,000 from for the parks and surface uh, playgrounds. So it's got to be spent and dispersed on November 2nd. 1.3 million for parks, you said? No, 650000 <coughs> for the parks, for the playgrounds, and then the 1.3 million we, um, in other CDBG funds. Because we have about 772000 we have to make decisions on how we will spend our own public infrastructure. And I know you've been having conversations with the fire department, with the police department, and, and other departments, so. Correct, because I wanted to be able to give you recommendations. Absolutely. Um, and so we should talk afterwards. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to put on the record that we need to make sure we make decisions quickly, and then we also need to make sure we don't lose those funds, because they will go back to HUD, uh, to the U.S. Treasury. And knowing that the fire department has needs, their 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 roofs, <coughs> other fire stations renovations, um, that we need to make sure we make decisions that way. Thank you very much. Can you just
$5,353.29 that has been rejected by the controller um, going back to 12 27 18 up to and through January 17th, 2020. And these funds that were rejected for the controller um, deal with home program administration as well as the Bear Scholarship Program where we're paying for children to go to college, food distribution, <coughs> and administration. So thank you very much. We're hoping to go to college, we're not paying. Well, so we're not with their tuition or more books. Yeah. And we pay for the college, unfortunately. But if Bernie wins, you never know. Free tuition for everybody. So, so just want to make sure we have that on there. Yep. So, old business, um, the um, update on the outstanding taxes and sale for the property that's on um, 205. So, the last time, um, last time we had this discussion on, at this at a board meeting, um, we were to look into two things. One, um, regulations um, from HUD related to how do we dispose of this property. Um, because it is property that is attached to a HUD funding. In fact, it was a it was a, um, foreclosure because of that because of the, that those funds. <coughs> also, how do we get the state to authorize the waiving of any taxes that are beyond the scope of the council being able to do it? If you remember the council. The council will have to vote for a home rule. That's how you do it. The council will have to do home rule on this to get the Senate up to the state so it passes the Senate and the Assembly in the same year. Before June, the end of June, which is when the session ends. That's how you do it. Okay. So we'll have to try to begin to work on that. Um, just so you know that. Um, this was a property that's attached to the uh, project that is on East on um, 3rd Street. Um, and the controller did have a conversation with the developer about it and told the developer point blank that URA needs to return the property back to the city. And then the city can then put it as a part of the auction and that um, he could purchase it through the auction. So, um, uh, he has requested. Yeah, he has requested a meeting um, with the mayor, so we want to coordinate a meeting um, just to have a discussion with him about his project and related to this, Who is this? property. And the and the Dan. Right. Um, so that's that um, with that prize um, grant um, update. So as you know, we need to get approved for the second um, part of City of Rise. Um, we are prepared. We are waiting for them to send us our first distribution. We have completed all of the administrative paperwork um, for that. Um, now, even set ourselves up in the New York in the New York State financial system for us to receive the, the money, which is three hundred and six thousand dollars that we will receive. What you need to know is that there are a few positions that are attached to this. Okay, so here's where we need some direction from this board and also from the city council. Because there is a lawyer, there's, a, there's an attorney position, there is a um, director position, um, there are two, um, one, one, code enforcement, enforcement, one code enforcement, 
Okay, well, one code for us are from City Rise and two from CDBG. Now, ideally, how <laughs> this should work, because remember, this is for, this money is from the AG's <laughs> office to get us started with us addressing our code enforcement issues. It is not, it is intended for us to continue to do that work after the life of the funding, grant funding is over. And so what we really are supposed to do is to create those positions in the city, on the city side, in the city budget, and they will be funded for the time period of the grant through CDBG. Okay? Um, we have our legislation prepared to go to the city council for that. However, the challenge is um, in conversation, in a general conversation with the controller, um, she is a little concerned about money going to CDB, going to URA, um, and the city having to create these positions. So I want to put it on record that we're going to seek to have some direction from the city council on how we approach this, the creation of these positions, right? Um, and may require some action from the city council on this. Okay. And again, are these monies that have to go? These are monies that have to go through the city and can't go directly to the URA. They are coming directly to the to URA, to but URA would have to then. It's just like with the youth, with the um, youth bureau, with the youth bureau um, positions, right? The URA would then pay the city, give the city the money for the positions, <coughs> and we could have. Um, you know, it, the money for the salaries ahead of time. So it's not like it's even reimbursable. We would just give it to the, give it to the city, um, but the city would have to create a <laughs> budget line for those positions. Okay? The city will have to be positions. Yes. No, I'm just saying. So for the, the Lord, for the, if we have the legislation. We don't, we're not talking about it on here. Yeah, we're, we're saying not giving, we're, we'll just I'm, do it the I'm right just, way and because we don't want to give anybody any additional. We'll, we'll talk about it after we have Correct. this meeting. Box yourself, yeah. yeah, I'm just informing this board of what we'll be doing. We're going to send it to the city council for the creation of those positions. Um, again, as you know, we still have that outstanding health um, insurance debt. Um, no movement has been made on that. Um, the we'll council, we'll the council had already... Safe. Excuse me? What's the amount? It's probably like $300,000 by now. 300000 by now. It keeps adding. Um, but the council had already made, uh, you know, passed the legislation on that. Um, again, that's with the comptroller. Same thing with Robert Half. Well, Robert Half, um, we're going to have to have a conversation with IDA um, because it looks like that that actual um, bill, invoice, is in IDA's name. Um, there was this this engagement of them on behalf of, I guess, IDA and URA underneath of IDA. So once we get the details around that, we'll come back to you. Um, as it pertains to the invoice of for Grassi and company, um, that has been that is something that the city was supposed to pay for. We have been sending it down actually, We've been, and the comptroller is uh, in my understanding from the previous mayor that Mayor Wallace, is that she refuses to pay that. And that was, you said that came from who? That she refused to pay? Grassi and okay. company. That yeah. is, those are the, all those are the, that's the financial company that holds the books for you, all right? And you but said that that, that was, was legislated. And that was done under Acting Mayor Wallace? Uh -huh. Correct. So, okay. So Correct. again. What's that bill? How many is that? 30,000. 30? I remember correctly, I'm hoping that I think it's roughly about 30000 I, I will give you the figures and send that to you today. Okay. And then we need to know about the scaffolding. Well, yeah. Was there an accident at 205? Yes, 205. Happen? It appears as if a car hit the scaffolding. <coughs> um, and so we did ask DPW to go out and get a quote for the scaffolding. Scaffolding. I think they actually have provided. They did provide us with that. You know what? How much that was? That with? Roughly twenty thousand. Roughly twenty thousand. We are trying I'm sorry, to how much? twenty thousand dollars to at least correct it to make it safe at this point. So what we're doing is we are looking in URA to see if there's any administrative funds or something that we can pay and use.
legitimately to pay for this. My concern is it that it is a liability. So we need, and I didn't want that liability. So why don't you, let's do this. Even, you know, I gotta talk to my colleagues. But we're having a special meeting tomorrow at nine. That would be something that I might recommend that you have on if we need to transfer money. Are you getting my drift? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Work with the law department. We've been there before. We've been there before. We'll find a line that we can take it out of. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, 9 a.m. tomorrow is a special so. Resolution. What is this? You want to read the resolution? So, resolution number 202001. Uh, at the last January meeting, we passed a resolution 2019 uh, 17. That was to hire. As a consultant, uh, and for Brown, census, right? Uh, no. For for the zombie property for the neighborhood. I thought he was working on the census. No. 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 And and uh, so, uh, for, uh, Brian, what are holding you? Recommend. As, as a member. Well, first of all, it's just a renumbering resolution, right? Yeah. It was duly passed. It was passed in 2020, so it should have been resolution 2020-001. That's all. It's just that's all. So, we'll just so move to we'll adopt. Just it. Right. Move to adopt resolution 202001 uh, um, to uh, renumber. So you need to fix this too. Yeah. Because the next time I see it, I'm gonna start holding up. Second. Nobody yet. Second. Other questions? Hearing them, roll call. Chair? Yes. Alright, Chair? Aye. Treasurer? Yeah, aye. Yes. What is this resolution number two about? I'm going to explain it. If I'm going to know right now, you're going to have to make me a yes. Okay. I'm going to know right now. Okay. All right. So my understanding. Oh, you're losing me with my understanding. My understanding, and Sylvia and, and, and our treasurer will confirm, that we, the modern, apply for a mortgage, $200,000 home mortgage, which we never gave. Never really That's why they kept that. He spent his own money to do it. We mm -hmm. never gave it to him. Oh, they, no. They I'm not changing my note. Y'all got the most to pass. But, no, I'm a no. Okay. But you can finish explaining All right. So the city erroneously put a $200,000 mortgage on a property to which we never gave them money. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Yes, so, okay, so this originally, and actually I'm not sure it was up, so. Um, I'm, well, I'm saying because it's that I think, it, no, right, right, but it actually, it actually, it actually occurred um, prior to, this is actually prior to the Thomas administration. This is to the tail end of the dates and Oh, yeah, I remember. Right, but I'm just going to show you. Okay, I'm still in there. You got enough of Okay, I just need, yeah. I'm just going to write it down and explain what happened. So, yes, there was under, at that time, the executive director was Jaime Martinez. And underneath of that came before this board um, a resolution to approve this mortgage for this property in which it was done. It was based upon that there was, again, funding that had not been expended for previous years and reallocating that money towards this project. After review of it, identifying that HUD, HUD would not allow for that, that money to be used for this project. And so that money was never actually expended for this project. So you still have the, money. the money was reallocated to other projects. In fact, it was used for other for other stuff, one of which was Grove Street Playground was redone. 
right? It's part of that as a part of that money. There was other some also some paved street paving that had been done as a part of all of that money that originally was supposed to go towards this loan. So the loan never they never received the loan. However, somebody administratively processed it and filed the loan as if it had been um, actually administered. So it had so. And Basically, HUD said it couldn't be used for this project is because the project had advanced too far. So you have to have money to right. shovel run the projects and things. That this was beyond the scope of what home funds could be used for, and that's why that money had to be redirected. As being the executive director of urban renewal in 2016, I know right. that to be the case. So they did not receive an executed mortgage. They did not receive these funds. They would be allocated. And um, we need to release this mortgage. We had to do the same thing at that time for Grace Baptist. We were charging Grace right. Baptist Church, and um, I issued them a refund check on on a loan that we had not executed. I was in, I would have to abstain on that one, but I'm alone on it still. And uh, thank you for your explanation. I could abstain, but I'm not a yes, so I'm gonna vote no. No. Right. Move to adopt um, resolution 2020. Dash O2. Second it. On the question. Hearing none, roll call. Chair. Yes. Vice Chair. No. Treasurer. Yes. Yes. I have my document in so you can sign it. So we yes. Anything on? Not on me. Any other new business? Move to adopt, move to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. No Chair? Yes. Vice Chair? Aye. Treasurer? Aye.